Joining me now is Hu Naijun. He's an associate professor of public policy and management at the University of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Well, first, if you can, if you could hear me, talk to us about what you have been experiencing yourself firsthand in Beijing. Oh, well, as we all know that Beijing is strengthening up its prevention and control measures, and uh, our universities will not be open to students or teachers or any other person who are living uh, outside the campus. So right now I'm working at the homes, and also, as you know, that whenever I go out, for example, if I want to go to any public places, I have to uh, make sure that my nucleic acid test is negative for the last 48 hours, etc., etc. So yes, that is my experience right now because Beijing is at its critical time of fighting against Omicron variants. So all the measures and the policies are, uh, in my opinion, very strict right now. I want to turn to Shanghai. Parts of that city are going back into lockdown. A little disappointment for those hoping that they've made some positive headway, which there has been. But um, to that point, is China's zero COVID policy working? Well, in, in my opinion, in, as we all know that in so many other cities, this policy, in my opinion, is working very well because we only have several to dozens of new, newly confirmed cases in other cities. But the Shanghai, in my opinion, is very specific because right now only Shanghai has more than 1,000 cases new newly confirmed every day. So I think uh, from statistics point of view, we can say that uh, the zero, the, the dynamic zero COVID policy, in my opinion, is working. I want to ask you about the economic impact of these lockdowns in China. With much of the world watching how China handles COVID internally, there are some foreign companies considering moving because of Beijing's COVID policies. How do you explain the balance of uh, keeping COVID out to the economic balance to outsiders? Oh, uh, well, in, in my opinion, I think there may be alternative uh, realities because if we not do something like this right now, there may be tens of thousands new, of newly confirmed cases every day in any other city in China. I think that will be also a good, a very huge impact to our economy. So I think we are making comparisons between different policies and different consequences. And then Chinese government is very cautious to choose the dynamic zero COVID policies in order to make sure that we have the potential and the future of economic growth. That is to say we can't sacrifice people's health in order to achieve economic growth. 